What, do you live under a rock? Among its many amusing commercials is the one from 2012 with the fellow living under a rock who was shocked to learn he could save 15% on car insurance with GEICO. Borrowing an expression used to describe people being out of touch with what was going on around them. Today's Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible and An American Missionary looks at the expression under a rock from a slightly different perspective. After calling on God not to forgive Judah's sin, Isaiah 2 verse 9, God revealed he would not and promised a day of reckoning when the proud of Judah would enter the rock and hide in the dust and throw their idols to the bats and moles while trying to hide in caves to escape the terror of the Lord, Isaiah 2 verses 10 through 21. It wouldn't work. Like it or not, believe it or not, we live in an under a rock world with respect to God's authority. The vast majority of people in America, even those calling themselves Christian, are shocked and often angered by anyone saying God has absolute authority over this world and the worship he will accept, and that there will be a day of reckoning for all who reject his authority to follow their own, or their churches, or their pastors for that matter. But God has the right to condemn and not forgive us today for our sin just as he had for the sinners of Isaiah's day. For some thoughts on God's authority to judge and our inability to escape it by hiding under a rock, let's go back to Plain Talk Magazine, March 1980. Because the article is a two-pager, this will be a two-video presentation with a bonus Throwback Thursday edition on Friday. Ultimate Authority, Awesome, Demanding, and Irrevocable by Robert F. Turner. Bernard Ram defines authority as that right or power to command action or compliance or to determine belief or custom, expecting obedience from those under authority, and in turn giving responsible account for the claim to right and power. Pattern of Authority, page 10. He suggests two sources of authority, superior position and truth, and he calls these imperial and voracious authority. This may sound a bit abstract. But if you are seriously interested in a study of authority, it will pay you to begin with this concept. Ultimate authority demands a position absolutely supreme and truth so pure as to be the eternal source of truth. International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, page 334, carries some thought-provoking remarks on this with this conclusion. The authority is God. He alone is self-existent and supreme who is what he is of his own right. If God exists, he is the ultimate criterion and power of truth and reality. All truth inheres in him and issues from him. The problem of, of authority thus becomes one with the proof and definition of God. What ISBE postulates, if God exists, Paul declares, God that made the world, he is Lord. Acts 17 verses 23 and following. This article does not propose to argue God's existence, but to offer some thoughts on the demands of ultimate authority. As an opener, there can be no ultimacy in authority, which depends on its subjects for validity. God is not established by human reasoning. Divine truth is not relative, applying to man's acceptance for its credentials. If any standard exists by which God must be tried, he becomes subordinate to that standard. That which is ultimate is its own witness and judge. All that can, reason can say about it is the dictum of harmonies. It is. See 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and following. A second great principle about the ultimate God is that only God can reveal God. Man cannot take him or find him by exploration. Paul wrote, The things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 11. The Bible is not the product of man's search for God, but the revelation of God to man. Many modern scholars say God revealed himself in Acts, and the Bible is a record of those Acts and what men have deduced from them. This is an effort to escape the weight of doctrinal information set forth in God's Word. It makes stated truth subject to man's interpretation of those Acts, it makes man superior to the Word. But, though God used earthen vessels for his truth, 2 Corinthians 4, 7, he guided their words so that what they wrote and said were his words, 1 Corinthians 2, 13 and 1 Thessalonians 2, 13. 
This is the wholly consistent means by which an ultimate God communicates with his creatures. Well, we'll stop there for today and conclude Robert's excellent discussion of God's absolute authority in tomorrow's bonus edition of Throwback Thursday. Until then, thank you for watching today's Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible and American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney helping you have a great day.